Hey guys, welcome back. Well, I've been doing a lot of processing lately now that we've got some rain after a long period of no rain, and it's caused me to think about how we go from the original SHO image that we get with a monochrome camera and the three filters, which is mostly green, and transform that into the more appealing image that is shades of blue and gold. And what we need is a good starting point from the green image to get us going along the path of the blue and gold image that we ultimately want. And I've been doing some playing around with pixel math to create a modified version of the SCNR function in PixInsight. And I thought I'd show you the results that I'm getting because I'm kind of liking these results better than what I get out of SCNR. Let's get started. Most of us know the problem. If you do imaging with a monochrome camera, you know that when you're taking pictures of nebula, you're using an S2 filter, an HA filter, and an O3 filter to capture light produced by photoionization of the sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms that surround a bright star. Those are the colors that we're interested in, but they aren't red, green, and blue. They are red, orange, and blue-green. And as a result, the imaging team at the Hubble Space Telescope developed a mapping that is called the Hubble Palette. You may have heard that referred to in the past, in which they take the S2, the longest wavelength color, and map that to red, which is the longest wavelength of red, green, and blue, and then the hydrogen alpha, which is the next longest wavelength, and map that to the green color, and then take the oxygen 3, which is the smallest wavelength, and map that to blue. And this is great, except for the problem that emission nebula are generally very strong in H-alpha, which as a result leaves us with an image that looks very unappealing and green, where there is basically no green in space. And so this is what we're starting off with when we form the basic Hubble palette with the data we get from the S2, HA, and O3 filters. But the Hubble produced images that we're familiar with are much more appealing shades of blue and shades of gold rather than mostly green. And so what we need is a good starting point to convert the greenish images we get out of an SHO combination into ultimately the blue and gold images that we like to look at after doing the processing. Now, it's not like we don't already have methods for doing this. We have some very good methods, and they work just fine. So this is just a little tweak of an existing method. In particular, in PixInsight, we have the SCNR process, which is called Subtractive Color Noise Reduction. And the whole idea behind this tool is, in each pixel, it takes the green and the blue levels, averages those together, and then reduces the green down to that average of the green and the blue problem is that the green in our SHO images is not generally noise. It's actually the best part of the signal coming from the HA filter. By treating our green as noise and simply reducing it to the average of the red and the blue, we are actually losing luminosity out of our image, and that luminosity is actually very meaningful and very valuable signal. So that's the main thing that I wanted to try to address with this modified SCNR approach. But we don't just have the SCNR approach to get to a good starting point. We also have the curves transformation in PixInsight, and we can implement a hue shift. Now, this is a good way of preserving that data. We just change its color. So the idea behind a hue shift is that we transform low-end green, and we'll see an example of this and what I mean by low-end. We transform low-end green to yellow, and high-end green to cyan with a little bit of green variation in between so that we get a realistic looking image. So this is a great way of preserving that good data we have in HA. We just split it off into more yellow and cyan colors. You can easily get carried away with these hue transformations and ultimately delete all the green from an image and then you get this unrealistic transition from the yellow up to the cyan. Frankly both of these methods work just fine. I've used them both. I find some images might respond better to the SCNR approach while other targets respond better to the curves transformation approach. So I'm just taking another look at the SCNR tool, but instead of using the SCNR, I'm, I'm doing everything that SCNR does, except that I'm going back in and pumping up the, the luminosity to what it was before I reduced the green. If we start off with our green image, any one pixel will tend to have a very strong contribution of HA and a much weaker contribution of sulfur and oxygen, and that produces an image overall that has a largely green cast to it. If you calculate the luminosity based on these proportions of numbers here, recognizing that this upper level here is saturation, which is equal to 1, I'm getting a luminosity of 0.72. If I then average the red and the blue, following the SCNR approach, I find out that I'm going to change my, my average of my red and blue is down here so that when I reduce the green down to that level, I get this. 
But this is what SCNR leaves us with, which is the luminosity now of 0.41 instead of 0.72. And so as a result, we get an image now that's more muted in appearance than we had with the brightness variations that we had in our original image. So what I'm trying to do with this modified SCNR approach is take another step where I amplify these colors so that they have the same luminosity, the, over, the pixel has the same luminosity as it did before. We end up with the risk of saturating the red or the blue. The best fix for this is don't start with an image over here that has been overly stretched. As an alternative, I have in my modified script here a factor that I can apply to this so that it doesn't scale it all the way back up to the original luminosity. Maybe I only go to 90%, for example, but that's kind of a stopgap. The best approach is to simply not overstretch the initial image. So this modified SCNR approach is best applied to nonlinear, preferably starless SHO images, and we want to avoid saturating the image at the end. Here's what the function looks like in pixel math if you want to copy it down. I'll put these lines in that you see here, which apply to the red color. I'll put these in the description of the video so that you can just copy and paste and then make the changes that I'm going to point out here in a minute for the green and the blue. First thing we do is calculate the luminosity of the original pixel. So I'm using the pixel function in the pixel math library. It says go to image dollar sign t, which in this case is the target, meaning when I drag this triangle over to an image, that will be the target image. I notice that I have unselected the uh, check mark here so that we're going to be having entries in the red, green, and blue channels. And at each X and Y within that image, it's going to pull out the color red, which is color index zero here. Multiply it times uh, a scale factor that we use for luminosity it goes to the green, which is color index one, multiplies it times the larger factor, and then finally it goes to color index blue and multiplies it times a much smaller number. And this is kind of the recipe for taking red, green, and blue and converting it into a luminosity. The next thing I do is take the red and the blue pixels and average those levels together. So that becomes my average. And then I compute the new green value, which is either the average that we just calculated from the red and the blue pixels, or if the original green value is less than that, then I just leave it alone and don't modify it. In other words, I don't want to increase the amount of green in the image. It's always reducing the amount of green in the image. This is the same process that SCNR takes. Now the difference is that I now compute the luminosity of the modified image, but instead of using the pixel function to pull out the pixel value in green, I'm instead using this modified green value here, and then everything else is the same, but it gives us a new value, a lower value of luminosity. And then finally, for this particular tab, I'm computing the value of the red pixel. I have an if function. The first thing it does is says, well, if the original luminosity was less than some small number, just ignore it and move on, keep the original uh, color combination in that pixel. Otherwise, take the red value in that pixel, scale it up by this ratio of the luminosity before, which was large, and the luminosity afterwards, which is small. And so we're scaling it by a factor greater than one. But if we run into the problem where we have saturation in this modified image, we can multiply it by this factor here, this bias factor, which is the number less than one to scale down the resulting luminosity. And that's what you would have in the red tab. Just copy and paste all of these lines into the green and the blue tabs, except that in the green tab, what we want to do is replace this pixel expression here with just the letter G that we calculate up here for the new value of green. And then in the blue, we're going to take the pixel the color index for red and replace it with the color index for blue, which is just two. There are some symbols that we're making use of here, so we'll have to go over to the symbols tab and enter in a couple of things. First of all is the floor. This is 0 0.1. So if the luminosity is less than 0 0.1, the modified SCNR function here doesn't do anything. And then there's the bias, which hopefully we can leave at 1.0 to pull luminosity back up to what it was. However, if you find that after running this, you're getting some uh, saturation at some in some colors at different points in the image, dial bias back to a smaller number to uh, eliminate that luminosity. And then, of course, we have these other symbols here are just those that are calculated in the process of coming up with the final colors for the red, green, and blue channels. Let's go over to PixInsight and see how this works. So the first thing we want to do is try out the hue shift implemented with the curves transformation process. And we can go here, highlight the image, 
reset the values and tell it to lock onto the image and finally go to the hue adjustment tab here and call up the preview window. Now what we want to do is take this spectrum of green, this width of green that's in our original image and try to reduce its contribution in the final image. And if we stay with this line here we get exactly the same amount of green in the final image as we do in the original image which is not what we're after. So I'm going to put in four points here and I'll show you why I'm doing that. And now I'm going to take this point and bring it over into the green. Now this is what I was referring to before by the low end green. So I'm going to bring it into the low end green and then drag it down to the yellow region and then use this other point over here just to give me a smooth transition up to that point. And you can see we've had a significant effect on the outer rim here where the, uh, the outer darker greens have gone to more of a yellow. Now I want to do the same thing with the blues. I'm going to take this point and drag it over into the high-end greens and pick up some of that cyan that I'm having here and then make a final adjustment for a smooth transition up to the red and magenta area. And now you can see that we've made a transition here from a lot of green, mostly green, to a bit of yellow and some cyan. And if we implement that, we have something that looks pretty good. Now realize what we're looking at here is this transformation applied yet again. And so if I apply it again, and now we'll probably go too far. We would not want to implement that. So let's clear that and pull this down, eliminate our window, and you can see so the, starting with this image, this is the image we would get, and that's not a bad starting point at all. That's a very good starting point, as a matter of fact. Now let's see what we would get if we use the SCNR tool. So I'm going to make a clone of that and bring up SCNR. I've got it set to average neutral. I've got it set to green, of course, and I've got the full, uh, the maximum level here to pull out as much green as it's going to. And let's go ahead and apply that to this clone image. And you can see it's a bit of more of a muted picture here. So let's set that aside as our standard SCNR approach. And now let's go to the modified SCNR. I've also set this version of the PixInsight function here to create a new image in the RGB color space so that when we run this thing, it's going to produce a new image. We don't need to create a clone of this original image. And now this becomes the, SC, the modified SCNR approach. And you can see and comparing this with the Pix Insights SCNR approach, we're getting some brightness that we weren't getting out of this image because remember the original SCNR approach kills off luminosity, whereas I'm trying to pump the luminosity back up. I'm getting deeper blues, I'm getting deeper oranges out of this, and I feel like this is a better starting point than the SCNR approach. When we form an SHO image, using a monochrome camera and the typical filters of S2, HA, and oxygen 3, we end up with a very green image because HA is such a dominant feature of emission nebula. And so what we need to do in order to end up with a final image that is shades of blue and shades of gold, we've got to find some way of getting us to a good starting point by converting that initially very green image into an image that has the core features that we're looking for. Now we already have a couple of methods for doing this. One is to use the PixInsight SCNR tool which takes the green and reduces it to a value that's the average of the red and the blue. Or we can use the Curves Transformation tool to move that green that we have into other colors such as yellow and cyan and that works very well. The hue shift is probably a better approach in that it preserves the luminance that's in the original image whereas the SCNR process that's in PixInsight treats green as a noise contributor rather than as a major signal that it is. So what I've been doing is experimenting with an SCNR-like approach, however I'm adding on a step in which I pump up the luminance back to its original value even though I've reduced green quite a bit. It's important not to stretch the original SHO image too far. You want to start with a nonlinear image but you don't want to go too far otherwise you can end up with some saturation in some pixels. I've been trying this modified SCNR function out on several of my SHO images and it seems to work pretty well so I'll probably be sticking with this as my beginning step in doing processing of narrowband images. 
When we form our initial SHO image, we end up with an image that's predominantly green, and we need to convert that into an image that has some stronger blues and stronger oranges so that we can then finish up the processing and turn it into the final SHO image in the Hubble palette that has the shades of blue and the more pleasing shades of gold that we're looking for in our final image. So if you have some time and you're interested, give this modified SCNR function a try. Until then, clear skies. I'll see you guys later.